Okay, good. We are here with the uh, some of the cast of 143. So, uh, please, let's go down the line. Introduce yourself and your capacity in the film. Uh, Steve Brennan, I played Dad. Mm -hmm. uh, Susan Perels, I played Mom. I'm Ashley Gergens, I'm the writer, director, and editor of the film 143. Yes. And Art Gergens, I played 147. Ah, yes, 147. Okay, so I'm going to start right down here and we'll consecutively ask three questions to each one of you. So the first one I want to start with is, is I'm guessing you have dad experience already. I do. Okay. I have three. Ah, okay. So when you were doing this particular role, did you put yourself in that same spot? Because I know for most of us who have kids, thinking about the idea of finding our child like that is heart wrenching. Yeah. So where did you find that role from? I did, yeah. Luckily, my kids were all healthy and, and good. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you. You put yourself in the shoes of, of, of the person who's going through that experience, sure. or you at least try to. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, a really good wife, too. And we worked <laughs> together. We were course, cheering the up. The director was excellent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. Have you had acting experience before? Uh, somewhat. I'm okay. non union. Nice. I do like to get involved in the projects. Okay. Like hanging out with young people. <laughs> of course. Who wouldn't want to do that on a young person's set? That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And I, I, I like being involved. Makes sense. Okay, young lady. Now, I'm guessing two of you are not married in real life. Where are you? Okay, that's right. Okay, so question for you. Being a female on the set, between some people when I talk to them when they work on younger sets, it's an enlightening experience you have. You know what I mean? Because they're seeing a younger person's point of view. They're learning different things. Other people are like, I have kids and I know what this is like. And it's like, ugh! So... What was that experience like? It was amazing. Ashley's film was one of the first films I, that I had worked on. And I was I had done a few other films before that were Indian studio nice. films. Okay. And now I'm full time, but this was such a great launching pad because I was blown away by the professionalism and just how she had everything dialed in and put together. I was like, wow, this was it was really incredible. It was one of the best ones that I've been on. Very, very yeah. nice. And can you tell us more about, have you done primarily shorts, or what's your body of work? Oh, gosh. Um, body of work is shorts, indies, full feature, print work, commercial. I started last year, and it's been great. The Silver Tsunami. I've been writing the Silver Tsunami. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, Hollywood in the house here. I'm pretty impressed. Thank you for that. We're skipping you because I have questions. Second <laughs> questions for Ashley, of course. So to you, Dad, I have a question for you. Ashley comes to you and she says, I'm going to make you Reaper number so-and-so. Not the big lead, not the big part. So how did the collaboration come about? Because you are father and daughter. Well, I think it was while she was in school, she had made a, you know some, some other films and, and clips and projects for class. And I think her first one, there was a character called Dad. Mm -hmm. And I says, hey, right here, here you go. And um, I was bypassed, and she hired uh, somebody that did play the dad. And, um, you know, just, it, it was very good, but I think when it came time for this, she realized she had a dad right there. So very, very nice. I got I, got I like that. Yeah. I know one of your day jobs. Tell me about Postal Biz Buzz. I have to know about this. Well, I, have, I have several. I've been at Sacred Heart University for 30 years, which is where she attended school and sure. the film studio of it. Um, I've always I run the mail and duplicating center there, and at one point, uh, especially during the pandemic, we created a podcast called Postal Biz Buzz, and we've talked about the mail business throughout the world. And as a side event, we also went on to create a podcast called Off the Charts, which deals with uh, music, people okay. that, that spent time creating some beautiful music and it's a shame that it's locked in a draw somewhere. So we're digging up all these people from the 70s, 80s, 90s. And coincidentally, um, one of the soundtrack that she uses, Gray Skies, is one of the bands that I interviewed called um, The Living. Ah. And when I interviewed them, it was about the lead singer had lost a brother to suicide, and he had tried to commit suicide three occasions. And when I when she pitched the idea, in, in my mind, I said, boy, I know the soundtrack for it. Nice. Very, very nice. Ashley, you've been holding on to me. I can't believe it. One of your former jobs is one of the things I used to love the most. How did you get hooked up with WWE? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. So, it's, again, it's all networking. So yeah, of it course was a friend it is. of a friend 
needed a PA for a couple days, for a couple months. Nice. So they called me up. I was doing some grunt work, some lifting, and stuff like that. But it was for the new studios that they're building in the studio in Stanford. Oh, so nice. I worked there for a couple days as okay. a PA. Um, but that was pretty much it. Maybe in the future there will be more opportunities at yeah. the studio. But that was it for now. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, you two as the parents, when you walked on set, and especially you because you come from more experience probably than Ashley does, um, was it more improv? Were you working by the script? Were you all hands on? Is it all of your picking up stuff, moving things around? Because that's kind of what I'm envisioning here. Yeah, um, we we stuck to the script, but the script re and it just being there really evoked that emotion. And I, I am a parent, and I just I mean both of us together we just started tearing up over when we were looking at each other across the bed in the letter. And he was a really great scene partner, so together. The emotion just flowed. It just kind of came back. Right. And um, the script helped a lot as well. Oh, I bet. I can imagine. So, Ashley, I want to ask you on the flip side. Yes. Uh, if my dad came to set, we'd have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. It would not be pleasant at all whatsoever. There's creative differences. You're like, mm -hmm. but I'm your father. And then you're like, but I'm the director here. So, uh, mm -hmm. what was what was that like? Was there any challenge to that? Yeah, there wasn't many challenges um, at first. People didn't know he was my dad, so like ah. he, he introduced himself as Art. So I'd be calling him Art when I was giving direction. I'm like, okay, Art, you ready? You okay. know this line. Um, maybe one challenge was he talks a lot. So one time <laughs> I had to reel back. I had he did an actor for the last scene, and I was like, wait, where is he? And he was talking to my dad somewhere else. So I had to get in director mode and be like, okay, Art, get away from my <laughs> get away from my talent. Um, but. That was the only challenge. Other than that, he was there, very supportive, helping me out. Nice. Um, he's not an actor, but he did do his part, I feel like, so I'm proud of him. It I'm shows. Happy. He was there on set yes. with me. I feel more comfortable, and all the students loved him and loved all the talent we had. So it was it was very collaborative, but it was a good time. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, Dad, I know you have a degree in English, so I'm curious. Are you utilizing that? And moreover, are you writing your own scripts? I've toyed around with lots of stuff in, in my life and made home movies, home videos, so I knew I could act. I know I'm almost at the camera. <laughs> oh. But, um, no, I use, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm really in love with the podcast that we're doing, so that's my uh, thing that we've been doing. And how regularly do you do it? Because folks want to know how to find that, obviously. Or oh, there's a uh, the Postal Biz Buzz. I've kind of passed the torch on that, but we were doing that once a month. Uh, off the charts, we are doing once a month, and there'll be a new one at the end of the month. Very, very nice. Okay, Ashley, I want to ask you a question. Okay. Um, one of the things that I noticed when I was creeping on you, because that's what us journalists do, we pay attention mm -hmm. to every detail, and I see that there's lots of notations out there about someone that might inspire you. So tell me a bit about your grandfather's influence on you. Grandfather or uncle? Grandfather, grandfather. according to this note. Okay. That's what it says. All right. Well, yeah, my grandfather, he passed away... Um, a few years ago. Um, it was sudden, but it was definitely a big part of my life. I mean, it was, we didn't expect it to happen. So I feel like I still carry the grief with me, which is why I bring it into filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's the best way to express yourself and get your emotions out. So um, I definitely carried his legacy. He loved the Patriots and he loved Boston teams. So, you know, going to Fenway to go for some games um, and concerts. But yeah, definitely miss him. But I'm he always supported me. I used to run track in high school, and he'd be front row at every meet. So um, definitely a good inspiration in my life. Nice. Yeah. I also noticed that you studied psychology, so I have to ask oh, this. Because you get on a set, and I'm not going to lie, yesterday's panel we found out that there's bunches of personalities and actors, that they're all batshit crazy. That was cold. <laughs> so does this help you, do you think, having this degree in dealing with other filmmakers, writers, parents, actors? I don't know. I think so. So I minored in psychology, um, but I feel like it helps me understand people better. I can communicate easily, and I can read people really well. So if they come on set and they're a little nervous, I can step them step away and make them feel more comfortable. Um, but yeah, it's just reading people and being able to communicate with different types of personalities and understand everyone and be in charge of them. It is a difficult challenge, yeah. but it's one that I like to face. So, right. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. So one, four, three. Yes. Well, I've been in short film here for the first time, so this would be like a premiere. And I got it. I'm so very blessed and proud to be able to say that. First question I have for you. 
Did you know you could probably hashtag Katy Perry, couldn't you, with the one four three? I think you did, yes, didn't you? I did. How'd that work out? I saw that. No, no message back. Not <laughs> yes. I was like so hard. I'm like, yes, it's Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. You tried though. I did. She named her new album that's releasing soon one four three. After I came out with this film, so <laughs> a little competition there. Maybe, there you go. maybe yes, maybe someone messages me back, but you never know. <laughs> so I want to throw out generalized questions here. Um, one of the things that we noticed, which is quite obvious, is of course the usage of makeup in the film, and of course particular costumes. I think the costumes might be simplistic and easy to find, but as for the makeup, did you have a particular makeup person, or was that in the budget, or how did that? Yeah, so my friend Carly, I paid her some money, but she was also a friend of mine, and she was in grad school with me, so we sure. all work on each other's, on each other's sets, um, and she practiced the makeup, I came up with the design, I was googling a lot of images, looking at films that have the Grim Reaper makeup, and then it, she sat down and did one person, and it took an hour, so we were almost a little behind schedule, but then as she went along, she got quicker and faster, so... Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of her and how she did with the makeup. She is an artist and paints, so she has some experience with that, and I think it came well through the, through the film. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the biggest things that stood out to myself and the other judges is how instrumentally perfect the music is fitted to the film. So, uh, are these friends? How did you find them? And then how did you match it up? Because music, we say a lot of times, is a character in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found three of the songs on, there's a website, I think it's called... It's for music, it's for editing for the films, I forget the name of it, but I found them and I copyrighted them in the um, titles, in the end, um, and then the other song was from my dad's podcast, I actually heard it and I thought it'd be perfect for the scene when Tori is contemplating committing suicide or not, because it actually mentions the words, just like, commit suicide, so I think it played well with the scene and the um, feeling of the darkness that you feel when you're... You know, I got those emotions. Yeah. yeah. Any of you can answer this one. One of the things that stands out, of course, is Michael Saunders' performance. And so <laughs> I'm curious to find out what you know about him, and more importantly, why was he the perfect fit for the flip? Yeah, I could answer that. Uh, so I actually saw Michael. I've known him in a couple other short films that my friends have worked on, and they've directed him before. Sure. And I kind of wanted someone maybe a little nerdy, a little quieter, um, a little lanky, so he kind of <laughs> has that vibe already. He's, he jumped right into character. He wanted to be a part of it. I asked him, and I was so grateful he was on set. I wish he could be here today, but he he's working a lot. I think he works somewhere in the city. In gotcha. China, and yeah, so he's busy. Um, but he was a great part to have on set, and I'm proud of the performance he gave. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But he can't play pool. He's <laughs> oh, my God. If you saw the bloopers, uh, I mean, we did seven, eight, nine takes, and just couldn't get the ball in the pocket. And yeah. finally... Off camera, had someone roll the ball. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It was a challenge. Oh, I imagine but so. We got the shot. Well, and in the storytelling, too, you have to look at a lot of these different things. You know, the whole inference of finding joy in the small things. And then, of course, you were capable of turning death into having a heartbeat. Now, how is that possible? That's, I think that's called clever creative writing. But. Yeah. So I thought it'd be interesting. I feel like you usually see. Grim Reapers portrayed as dark, scary figures, um, like non-human-like, so I thought it'd be cool to have a Grim Reaper that had some human emotions, maybe get the feel of that they're somewhat human in a way, and it kind of relates to real life, like maybe if someone dies too soon, you wish they had a sensitive Grim Reaper, you know, maybe someone looking out for them, so... Absolutely. That's what I was thinking with that idea. Now, my favorite character was the witchy woman. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself. I'm like, she's got a lot of class. She's like me, like, listen, Ashley, you're yes. just going to do this, right? So tell me just a bit about her. Yeah, so her name's Heather Delude. She is a like, pretty well-known actor in Connecticut, and I had her on my first short film, which I directed in 2022. She played, like, a boss principal evil woman, so I thought she'd fit the part of uh, the character Reaper 1, where she's in power of all these men who are Reapers, she's higher than all of them, I feel like she has that, um, she has that power and presence when she's working with her, she studies, she gets, she's good with um, scene partners and all that, so I'm, I was very happy she was on set, nice. wish she could be here today too, but again, she's busy with another gig, so. <laughs> Did she rub off all that power on me, because I feel like I want her to <laughs> know what it like no one's hearing me. So my last question to you is, um, I have to ask, who's Thomas? Yeah, so Thomas Altieri, he is my uncle. He passed away to suicide in November of 2022. Um, 
He was a great person. He struggled with his mental health for many years, so he was taken too soon. So I kind of made this film to cope with that loss, and it's what I wish happened in real life. I wish he had someone looking out for him with human emotions that understood that it was too soon for him to go. Sure. So this film helped me move on from that and grow and just learn how to um, take my real life experiences and bring it into my filmmaking, which I think is the best way to go about with making films. So what are you going to do with 143 now? Well, well, where is it that's headed? a great question. I hope some distribution. We'll see. Or maybe a sequel, 144 or 143 <laughs> oh, part <nice>. two. <laughs> nice. Who knows? But I do think I like the story and I'd love to create more with it. And I did love the actors. Loved you guys. So I'd love to work with you again. Maybe one day soon. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Okay. You can turn off the panel part now. Really? So this is the Why? part. Because we're finished with that. This is the part where um, I get to tell you. I looked down a bit.